In this video, we will get into a little bit more of the math side of the soil physical properties, uh, talking about porosity, particle density, and bulk density. So porosity, or pore space, is the volume of soil that is not occupied by a solid. Porosity is expressed as a percentage of the volume of the soil occupied by pores. And then if you remember what we were saying our ideal soil has as far as percent porosity, it was... 50%. So our ideal soil has 50% porosity. Um, some of that should be air filled, some of that should be water filled. So pore size can vary quite a bit between large and small. Uh, large pores are mainly um, for root and water movement and or air and water movement and root growth. And then small pores help with water and nutrient retention for future use. So if we look at some comparative uh, pore spaces, we have well-sorted but loosely packed sand on the left. Then in the middle, we have our large sand particles with some silt and clay in between them. And so we see how our pore sizes shrink considerably once we add those finer separates. And then on the right, this would be like a compacted sand where all the particles are shifted um, and packed in as tight as they can be versus here we have loose packing. And so again, see considerable decrease in our pore space. So we have our macro pores, which are the large pores between the soil particles. And then we have um, micro pores on the soil aggregates themselves. And the micro pores become um, important with water holding and our microbial content and their activity. So uh, sometimes the water micropores can be too tightly held for plants to use, but the microbes can be in those pores um, doing their thing and keeping soil life going. So here's just uh, another way to sort of envision that. So this would be from the, the top if we're looking at our soil particles, and then from the side. So our macropores would be in between these large pieces and then the micropores are inside of the aggregates themselves. Another way to picture this would be our macro aggregate here. And we have some plant roots going through, um, some fungal hyphae. And if we take a snapshot of that and notice our change in scale to our micro aggregate, our roots are quite large and kind of going around them, but we still have fungal hyphae going in and through them. Uh, it's even smaller scale here. Um, you can see the individual pieces of silt and clays and plant debris that is mixed in there as we get even smaller. Um, we see humus in here, microbial debris, um, very small silt and clay particles larger pores with water that's plant available, smaller pores with water that is not plant available, but would still be microbial available. So as we look at the mean aggregate size and percent of large aggregates, this is an example of the effects of uh, agriculture on soil aggregation. So we have our native prairie, much larger aggregate size, and our cornfield, so less than half of the average aggregate side in a soybean field and percent of large aggregates. So average size, mean size of aggregates and percent of large aggregates. Native prairies think of very productive, um, good quality soils. So they are a lot larger aggregates on average and the percent of the aggregates is much higher of large aggregates. And we'll revisit this uh, in a couple slides here. So determination of soil porosity, it's expressed as percent of volume of pores in a soil. So we have volume of pores divided by volume of soil times 100 equals our pore space. Um, put it into a more mathematical equation here. Percent pore space equals 1 minus the bulk density divided by the particle density times 100. So density is the weight per unit volume. This is grams per cubic centimeter, um, and then it's just written 
three different ways. So the nice thing about metric system is we can switch from centimeters to milliliters, same thing. Uh, cubic centimeters, same as a cubic milliliter. And this minus three up here in the exponent just means that it's per. So we can take this slash out, makes it a little more streamlined. Uh, particle density is the weight of particles per unit volume. So particle density equals the mass of solids divided by the volume of solids. So particle density equals bulk density divided by 1 minus the porosity. Dependent on chemical composition of a particle and expressed on a dry weight basis. So particle density um, doesn't really change that much and so we can stick with some some quick ranges so for the mineral organic portions uh, but in general we say that soil has a particle density of 2.65 um, then can look up different minerals you know like I said they have a range um, but in our calculations when we have a soil particle density we'll use 2.65 for simplicity that's grams per cubic centimeter um, particle density is important uh, not so much for plant growth, it's not really related to texture. Uh, it has more to do with settling in water and erosion. So we'll use it um, to get familiar with it, but um, as far as land management goes, resource management, we don't use it a whole lot. It's just important to know that it's there though, and the difference between that and bulk density. So bulk density is the weight, the dry weight of soil per unit volume. Uh, it's always lower than particle density, and bulk density increases with compaction and generally can increase with depth as well. It's inversely related to porosity, so as bulk density goes up, we have fewer pores, so our pore porosity goes down. Bulk density is related to texture and structure and is related to organic matter content. So the equation for bulk density is the weight of dry soil divided by the volume of soil, including pores, equals bulk density. Uh, put in a way we can use it better, bulk density equals particle density times 1 times minus porosity. Mineral soils, bulk density is approximately 1.25 grams per centimeter cubed. Uh, remembering that our particle density would be 2.65 grams per centimeter cubed, and then the porosity is approximately 53%. Uh, Organic-based soils, so these would be uh, something like a wetland bog. Uh, the bulk density may be as low as 0 0.15 grams per centimeter cubed. Particle density, 1 point gram, so porosity is 85%. Again, these are just some ballpark values to give you an idea of... Um, the difference between minerals and organics. So determining the weight of a soil, so we have an acre plow layer volume just equals the depth times area. So we assume plow layer about 8 inches or 0 0.67 feet. So the volume of soil in an acre uh, is about 43,560 square feet. Or, sorry. So that's times they assume depth, so our volume is about 30,000 square feet. Uh, estimated bulk density is 1.2, <coughs> so the soil is 1.2 times heavier than the same volume of water. Um, and the water weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic feet, then our soil weighs 62.4 times 1.2. So the soil in a acre of land 8 inches deep is about 75 pounds per cubic foot. Um, some more calculations can work that out to about 2.2 pounds per acre plow layer. So that's 8 inches deep in an acre. So just a quick way to use bulk density um, and also show that there's a lot of weight in soil, so moving it around is usually pretty impractical. Um, more for our point, bulk density can be used um, in relation to roots and soil erosion. So on the left here, we have um, what happens to bulk density after plowing, but then within 
traffic in a field. So the compaction force is most felt directly beneath the tires and then radiates out there. Um, yield from a field, no tra or, yep, no traffic versus traffic on the sides of the road. We see that yield is decreased when we are looking in the areas of traffic. So here we have uh, sort of a cross section of a field. No traffic on the left means lots of roots are growing in the uncompacted soil. On the right is where our tractor drove and we see no root growth. And then this right here would be our plow pan. So about as deep as we would normally plow, we get this really dense, really compacted area. And then they come through and maybe rip it with a subsoiler and the roots break through that plow pan and then can use all that soil underneath there. So this is the importance um, of a compacted layer. Even if the soil beneath it isn't compacted, the roots need to be able to access that. Ways to avoid it, uh, larger wheels, larger surface area. And then on the right, she's using a board to spread out her weight as she is raking her fields. So again, determination of bulk density. Um, some general guidelines between bulk density and root growth. So limiting bulk density by soil texture. So if anyone tells you this soil bulk density is too high, your first thought should be, well, what's the soil texture? Because um, an ideal bulk density in a sandy soil could be as high as you know, 1 1.5, 1 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter. Um, but that same bulk density in a clay soil is root limiting. So always keep that in mind. When you're thinking bulk density, we need to be thinking soil texture. Uh, again, just some references for you. Uh, water would have a bulk density of 1. Uncultivated soil, um, 0 0.8 to 1.2. And then root penetration is limited at 1.4 to 1.6. Uh, concrete, as a reference, has a bulk density of 2.45. Um, this is showing what happens when we take the pore space out and calculate bulk density and soil particle density. And uh, bring it back to an urban setting. Development can be probably our most common um, compaction event. Uh, how can we management, manage it in uh, urban setting, urban forestry? Protecting from equipment. So things like um, ultimats or plywood when we're driving equipment over. If it's a longer term project, it's not a bad idea to build a wood mulch highway for us to keep dragging on or driving on and then um, that can be left on site or that could be cleaned up after the job but something to protect that soil because as soon as we lose it it's infinitely harder to get it back and so we need to be protecting our soil and um, keeping it nice and healthy while we work